Hey guys, it's Andrew Hummer BHA here bringing you a new video. So it's been a while since I posted a new video. I mean, we're talking maybe like almost a month. So I'm excited to get to the point where I can start making videos again. I've been super swamped lately. And so I've really been trying to get some stuff done so that I can get back into making videos because I really like to show you guys all kinds of cool stuff. So today we are going to look at another tutorial video. Now I haven't done one of these in a while either. I've been doing a lot of uh, product reviews, so I'm glad to come up with a new uh, tutorial video to show you guys. And today we are going to look at Zabbix, as you can kind of see here behind me. Uh, Zabbix is a great network monitoring tool. It's open source. Here we go. All right, so as I already mentioned, we're looking at Zabbix today, the network monitoring tool. And we're gonna look at how we can install this in a Proxmox VM. And I'm gonna run through the whole setup. As you can see here behind me, I found this awesome install guide. It's a few years old, but not bad. Same basic setup as far as getting this thing installed. So we're gonna run through the whole deal ourselves and get it installed. So let's get started. All right, so let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover in this video. For starters, we're going to uh, create a VM in Proxmox. And once that's done, we are ready to download the Zabbix appliance from their site. Uh, once we have it downloaded and extracted, then we are ready to import the appliance into the VM. After that, then we need to make a few changes to the VM and then we should be able to start it up. Once it's up and running, then we are ready to log in and check out Zabbix. Lastly, we will add some devices or a device into Zabbix just to kind of give you an idea of how that works. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, first things first, we need to create a new VM in Proxmox uh, to run uh, Zabbix. Uh, so here we are in Proxmox. We're going to hit the Create VM button in the top corner. Now for the most part, we are just going to run with all of the defaults. So I'm going to give it a name here. I'm just going to call it Zabbix. Uh, let's choose a physical CD DVD here. Uh, no changes under system and no changes need to be made under hard disk either. CPU and memory can uh, change if you want, but for now we're just going to kind of leave them the same. Leave network alone as well, and then we can just hit finish under confirm. Uh, as you can see here, we now have a new VM called Zabbix. So let's move on to the next step and we can get the Zabbix appliance downloaded. All right, for this step, we are going to download the appliance from the Zabbix website. Now we do all of this from the CLI of the Proxmox server. So here I am logged into the Proxmox CLI and we're going to use the command that we got from that install guide, slightly modified for the latest version of Zabbix. Uh, it'll take a second to download here. And of course, I'll have everything in the comments below so that you can just copy and paste it. Uh, but once it's downloaded, then we are ready to extract it. And uh, we'll go ahead and move into the extracted uh, directory. At this point, let's move on to the next step and we will import the new Zabbix appliance uh, to the VM. Okay, so importing the appliance uh, is done from the uh, Proxmox CLI as well. So we're gonna run this command here now the number you see 103, this is the number assigned to the VM when it was created. 
Uh, so you'll find that out when you create your VM. And then of course at the end there, it says VOL3, that's for volume three. That is uh, the volume that I am uploading this to. So obviously your, um, your volumes that you have configured on your Proxmax server will probably be named differently. So just uh, whatever volume that you want to upload to, that's the one that you're gonna list out there. Once you have it imported, then we can kind of remove it from here, just kind of make sure we keep everything cleaned up. And after that, we're ready to move on to the next step and we'll get our VM updated so we can get it up and running. So the last main thing that we need to do to get this server up and running is to basically add the newly imported drive for the appliance itself. Uh, so from the Proxmox GUI here, you can kind of see that the uh, drive is listed as unused. And so uh, basically if we double click on that and we hit add, then it kind of becomes an actual drive there. So after that, we can just go into the boot options and we're going to make sure that we enable this drive to be the main boot drive. And once we do all that, we should be able to start the VM. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step and we'll take a look at Zavix. All right, so when you first log in to Zavix, uh, your default username is admin. Uh, now make sure that the A is capital um, for that user. Your password, of course, will just be Zabbix, all lowercase. Now this will get you in, and of course, as you can see, this is the default dashboard. Now we don't have any devices added in there yet, but by default, you do have all the stats from the Zabbix server itself. So you can see the server just booted up. So it's letting us know that that might be a problem, uh, but no worries there. Cause we obviously did just boot the uh, server up. So that should be okay. If we click on all dashboards here, we can actually see the dashboard for the server itself. And it has a pretty decent dashboard. There's quite a bit of info there that you can look through and see. So it looks pretty nice. Just kind of going down uh, the different tabs on the side here. Under hosts, you can see there's currently only one host. Uh, that's the Zabbix server. Um, if we click on latest data, this will show you how much information it's actually pulling in. Uh, so just on the one server itself, it actually is monitoring quite a bit. We only have the one device uh, right now, so there's not a whole lot under maps. But as more devices get added, this will actually start to grow. Uh, let's see, not much to see under inventory just yet. Same with reports. Once we start getting more devices added in there, there'll be a lot more information to show. Uh, under configuration, this is where we'll be adding the new devices, um, which we're going to kind of do in that next step. Now we can create groups for those devices to kind of group everything together. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, configure housekeeping. 
basically how long do we want to keep all this data for? Uh, obviously, the more devices we get added, um, the more storage that you're going to need. Under users, uh, we can, of course, create different users with different permissions, as well as set up alerts. So basically, when problems arise, you have the ability to get notified by email or all kinds of other options there um, if things go wrong. Other than that, down here at the bottom is the link to the integration section on the Zabbix website. So this is where you can get all kinds of templates and dashboards uh, for various devices and stuff that you might want to add into your Zabbix server. I mean, a lot of devices can be added uh, just using SNMP. You also have the ability to uh, install a Zabbix agent on your machine. So there's a Windows agent, there's one for Linux, there's one for Mac. Um, and it'll pull in a lot of information that way using the agent. As you can see here, if we search for Unify, there's already some stuff uh, built out for Unify devices that we could add. So that's pretty cool there. But that's your basic rundown of what you get with Zabbix. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with the server. It'll become more visible to you as you add more and more devices and just all the customizations that you can do. Uh, let's move on to the last step and we'll see if we can't get some devices added into this new server. All right, so for adding devices into Zabbix, it's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna go into configuration here and you're gonna click on hosts. And this is where you're going to create a new host, which is basically how you're going to add that device. Uh, so we'll give it a name here. Um, and you're going to probably want to assign a template to it so that you can get certain graphs and uh, dashboards uh, that are already kind of default configured for those types of templates. Uh, so for today, we're going to add an SNMP uh, Linux machine. Um, so uh, for a template, there is a Linux SNMP template that's kind of default that has all the basic stuff in there. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to put it in a group called just Linux servers, because uh, that's kind of what it is. You can create any kind of host group that you want um, and call them whatever you want. So for me, like I said, I have one called Linux servers. So we're going to add that in here. And then for interface, this is where we're going to add the... Um, SNMP um, interface. So like I said, this was an SNMP device. It's already got SNMP running on it. Um, so we'll select SNMP here. We're going to give it the uh, IP address of that machine. So it's 10.10.10.20. We want it to be SNMP v2 because that's how we have it set up. Um, and of course, the community for this is just going to be public. Uh, that's kind of how I have it set up for default. So the only other thing we have to do here is we're going to go over to macros. And we're basically going to uh, make sure that we have an entry for that default SNMP community. So we'll uh, paste that here. We're going to type public here. And that's pretty much it. We can uh, basically add uh, the uh, host or the device here. And it's going to take it a little while to start populating all that uh, information that's getting over SNMP. Uh, but if we click on uh, uh, hosts here under monitoring, we can look at latest data and you can kind of see that it's already starting to pull information in. Um, like I said, um, it'll take it a little while to really start populating everything. But if we go back over here and we click on graphs, you can see that graphs are already starting to be created for all of this data. So that's pretty cool. But that's basically it for adding SNMP devices. Uh, obviously, there's other types of devices that you can add. SNMP, at least for me, is pretty common. Most of the devices I have around my house are running some form of SNMP, so it makes it easy for adding stuff. But there's other ways that you can uh, add devices as well. There's even templates for adding MQTT devices. Um, if you uh, have a lot of MQTT stuff around your house, especially if you're using Home Assistant, so that's certainly an option as well. But I figured this is enough to kind of get you started with Zabbix. It's a pretty awesome open source 
um, network monitoring tool uh, that's great uh, just to run around the house. Uh, if you have a lot of network devices and you may be having some issues and you're not sure where they're coming from, this will kind of collect all of that data. So it makes it super nice um, and easy to kind of monitor. So definitely, uh, you know, head over to Zabbix website and check it out. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me a Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to my spring merchandise page and check out all of the Burns Home Automation merchandise. If you haven't had a chance, check out SmoNet. I'll have a link in the description below. Head over to their website and see what deals they're currently running. If you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, check out Robinhood. I'll have a link in the description below for that as well. If you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.